uh, as you may see from the uh, main page. Uh, now I want to talk about the blue-green uh, deployment on Azure via the Terraform and uh, Jenkins pipeline as uh, seen which uh, helps us uh, to uh, do this stuff automatically. Uh, first of all, uh, the reasons. Uh, we, in our project, we had uh, all the uh, out deployment, uh, uh, how to say this stuff, out legacy application, uh, deployment process of which were, uh, was covered by a chain of freestyle jobs uh, and all the automation uh, was uh, done on PowerShell and Azure model. Uh, as you may know, uh, Azure Era model will be end of life at uh, December uh, 2020, so in a few months actually. So we need to migrate somewhere from the from this model. Uh, next one seen, it's a chain of uh, Jenkins, Jenkins freestyle jobs. Uh, this sync, sync works uh, as expected, but it's uh, pretty hard to uh, debug the jobs, debug the process actually. And uh, also in case of uh, Azure infrastructure, we have used unmanaged uh, uh, virtual machines uh, with uh, unmanaged availability set. Uh, also, we have used the uh, uh, old Red Hat uh, image. And uh, as a result, our pipeline takes uh, one or a bit more uh, hour to from start to end because of uh, sequential actions and also in one of the jobs, we are doing a provisioning of uh, freshly created uh, virtual machines. In case of uh, the project, we are doing this via the uh, chef uh, and via the knife bootstrap, actually. Uh, in case of my prototype, I have used it Ansible to do just to fill the gap in case of because uh, <laughs> actually in Ansible I just install uh, in Jinx to listen uh, port 18 and that's all but anyway we have bootstrap stage and it's covered so as solution we decided uh, inside the project inside our scrum to migrate on the first point, to migrate to Azure model, uh, create one uh, Jenkins pipeline job, and also migrate to manage the availability set, uh, use, uh, in case of project, Godos image, in case of uh, my prototype, uh, actually fresh CentOS image. Uh, also, to speed up the bootstrap process, uh, we decided to use uh, Packer for to prepare our Goat as image uh, to install uh, latest updates, some um, utilities, and uh, Java actually because uh, uh, we are running a uh, Apache Cake Lock on this infrastructure for. Uh, SSO use it uh, for our developers and it requires Java. Uh, also use parallel execution uh, where it is possible. Uh, in case of project, uh, parallel uh, execution in uh, bootstrap stage because it's possible to run a knife bootstrap for uh, uh, each new virtual machine. Uh, in parallel and also uh, I'm using the parallel execution for uh, stages covered uh, by PowerShell. Uh, and at the end uh, we just check it all the requirements and uh, decided to try to implement this stuff on Terraform actually. So in case of Terraform, why? Because of uh, 
possibility to have remote state, so it's possible to, for team to work together on the same infrastructure and uh, uh, do not, uh, let's say, broke something in case of uh, someone else uh, uh, doing some changes inside the infrastructure. Uh, also, possibility to import existing resources because uh, we have a lot of stuff uh, in, infra in, in infrastructure created by uh, PowerShell itself. Uh, models, so it's possible to create a model which will cover uh, creation of some resources and then reuse it. So, and also we can uh, store models in separate uh, repos, so it's possible to work on them. Uh, <laughs> in uh, some different way. Uh, <laughs> let's say different way, uh, and this I mean that uh, some uh, teammates can work on one model, uh, other on other one, and in our infrastructure all those models will be used. And also possibility to use uh, multiple providers via the aliases inside one project. In case of uh, this presentation, this is uh, not so necessary, but uh, project itself has uh, uses multiple clouds so it's possible to integrate our uh, code into the these other uh, apps uh, inside the project in infrastructure in case of uh, packer uh, packer will not be covered in uh, this session but it good to mention actually a uh, single json uh, we have one uh, actually one configuration file for all the stuff uh, su support m multiple provisioners uh, in uh, as i have mentioned in uh, uh, in the projects it's chef uh, yeah in the project it's chef and shell so that's all for now. And also it uh, can be easily integrated with uh, some Jenkins, uh, scheduler Jenkins pipeline, which was done for project. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, I will not show this stuff, but it uh, pretty small standard Jenkins pipeline, which uh, just uh, uh, runs uh, the packer for Azure uh, environment to create and then update the image. Actually, let's talk a bit about the infrastructure itself. <laughs> In case of my prototype, I don't have uh, MySQL, uh, but uh, I have the private network. Uh, in my case, and also we have uh, two groups of uh, virtual machine, blue and green. As you know, uh, in blue green deployment, we have uh, one uh, set of uh, VMs or resources which uh, serves uh, uh, user uh, requests, and another one which is standby and waiting for updates, tests, and then it's uh, possible to switch the load balancer to standby uh, set of resources and it will uh, start uh, handling uh, client requests. Uh, in my case, uh, also, it's uh, a bit uh, strange thing, but it is a project requirement, and uh, we have yeah we have a blue green uh, group, but one thing: uh, each time when we run deployment, we are creating and provisioning a new virtual machines. So I don't know why uh, team uh, decided to do this in this manner, but it was what it was. So I just uh, repeat the behavior which was uh, created before uh, I started my work. Uh, and also, uh, we, uh, our uh, standby set of VMs uh, should uh, be in uh, delegated uh, 
mod. So we need to, to disable, um, let's say, to stop the virtual machines in uh, Blue Drop. And actually, okay. That's why uh, Jenkins pipeline, in uh, at least in my case, uh, very useful because uh, Terraform uh, provider for Azure with uh, and uh, Linux virtual machine resource uh, uh, does not support uh, state, at least for now. So I can't. Uh, set the state uh, directly from uh, Terraform. That's why uh, to stop the uh, virtual machines in uh, Blue Group, I need to, actually I have used uh, PowerShell because uh, we have uh, <laughs> Windows slaves uh, connected to our uh, uh, Jenkins, but in case of prototype, I tried to use PowerShell on the uh, Linux slave. It uh, doesn't matter. It should work, actually. Uh, but to stop virtual machines, uh, I'm using the PowerShell. And let's go. So, the, uh, let's go. So, the code and Jenkins file itself. I'm I will switch to the where it is. Okay. Um, switching to. Yes, code. Okay. Uh, let's talk a bit about the Terraform itself. So, as I have mentioned, we have models uh, inside the Terraform and in case of prototype, just a, a dev environment, but it's possible to create more. Uh, so, inside the dev environment, we have a main dev manifest where actually uh, all our models uh, use it and I'm creating the private network uh, just by using the pro community provided uh, model for this stuff, but it's only for a uh, prototype. And also, what else? <laughs> Bastion host, because in case of private network, I need to have uh, some place uh, where a uh, slave uh, will be uh, uh, started and this slave should be able to communicate with uh, our VMs in blue and green group. And next one, sync. I have uh, three groups of uh, VMs, blue, green, and temporary. So on the first stage of uh, Jenkins pipeline. I'm actually on the first stage. I am uh, logging into the uh, Azure, but doesn't matter. Next one, it's a Terraform init, and next one, it's a creation of uh, virtual machines inside the uh, temporary group. And here, I'm using targets to be to create uh, exactly. Uh, resources which I am uh, I need in this stage. So it's a uh, uh, virtual machines uh, in temporary group itself, uh, backend pool for temporary group, and in this case it's a, a local file. Uh, actually, I have inventory uh, manifest where I am creating uh, the inventory file for uh, Ansible, just uh, using the output of uh, uh, of the temporary group uh, model. It's a uh, virtual machine's names and uh, IP addresses. So as next one, sync. I'm doing the bootstrap. 
as uh, on the previous stage I have created uh, the VMs and uh, the inventory itself. So now Ansible is able to use this inventory. In case of uh, implementation of uh, Bootstrap inside the project, uh, we have used uh, Knife uh, Bootstrap uh, command uh, and Chef actually for uh, freshly created virtual machines. And uh, here I uh, I have used uh, the uh, parallel execution. So it's possible to show it a bit later. Yeah, here. So just uh, get the uh, VM's names output in, inside the output uh, manifest. I have where it is. Uh, actually this one output uh, and I just uh, showing it in the JSON format uh, using JQ in this case in case of project uh, there was PowerShell command uh, convert to J uh, convert from JSON to get the exact values uh, in this JSON and then I'm creating a I'm creating actually uh, new stages and then execute them in the in parallel. So in case of uh, in this case of in time of stopping VMs, uh, we still use this uh, parallel execution in project. A parallel execution also use it for Bootstrap. Uh, Next one, scene. After the uh, oops, after the uh, successful bootstrap of VMs, uh, I'm changing uh, the uh, tag for these VMs because inside the uh, virtual machine resource we have a bunch of tags to be able to determine the uh, state of VM actually without uh, interacting with the Terraform state and also to, uh, to have some description of VMs inside the uh, Azure console. Uh, what else? So after setting uh, strap attacks, I'm doing the next one, seeing uh, which uh, shows uh, what is the what the P cycle was invented to work with Terraform and Blue Green, at least in my case. Uh, it's uh, important to mention that I tried to find some uh, patterns uh, to create this stuff. Uh, in Google, let's say, and I haven't found anything that uh, will be able to fit my requirements. So <laughs> that's why I have used uh, three groups, uh, target option and uh, ability of Terraform state to move uh, the uh, resource state from uh, <coughs> uh, one. <laughs> From one record into the another one and in this case what i am doing uh, as we have uh, prepared a temporary group and bootstrapped it in the previous uh, stage uh, we are doing next one sync first of all i'm destroying the uh, blue group virtual machines as i had mentioned uh, this is uh, requirements uh, requirement uh, in a project itself so we don't have uh, two sets of VM uh, vms actually we are creating those sets each each time so first of all i'm doing the cleanup in uh, blue group uh, then i'm moving uh, the green group VMs into the blue group. Uh, still, uh, so all those uh, changes is done inside the Terraform state. It's uh, those stuff uh, 
uh, don't affect the uh, clients and their requests. So still uh, blue se uh, green set of VMs uh, moved, which was moved into the blue group was still able to serve the client's requests. And also I moved the pool, uh, backend pool from the blue group into the green. Uh, next one thing, uh, I'm doing same uh, actions with uh, <coughs> temporary group and uh, I'm moving this uh, temp group into the green group. Next one thing, it's a, a change of uh, load balancer rules. So I just uh, do as I apply for uh, the target of green group VMs. Uh, load balancer and load balancer also pool and load balancer rules. Uh, and also your table, which is not needed here, but anyway. And also in this stage, I am uh, destroy the backend pool in uh, blue group. Anyway, uh, load balancer switch it to a new uh, green uh, group uh, backend pool and rules uh, for load balancer also updated. So now it is possible to clean the resources which we don't need. So again, destroy to target. Uh, next one scene, it's uh, exactly a stage where I'm uh, using PowerShell, uh, where I getting the names of virtual machines inside the blue group and then do <coughs> actually stop action on those virtual machines. And also I am, uh, change uh, the life cycle state tag on this virtual machines. It's also done by PowerShell. Uh, actually uh, here uh, we are storing uh, those uh, virtual machines in blue group uh, in the delegated state, but it's possible to do rollback on this point. Uh, so we are able to uh, start those machine machines again uh, and switch uh, actually create the uh, backend pool for those machines and switch the load balancer uh, to the blue group of virtual machine in case of uh, some issues with the uh, new set of VMs which was moved into the uh, green group and last one stage it's just a health check <laughs> check that on port 18 uh, we have something in, in case of uh, the project application there is a separate uh, separate health check uh, road so <laughs> it is uh, a bit easier to determine uh, the state of uh, machines and Actually, in this case, uh, that's so. Uh, let's try to run this stuff on my. Okay, guys, uh, do you see Jenkins screen? Yes. Okay, cool. And. Ah, I haven't mentioned this stuff, but in the Jenkins file, uh, we have a bunch of uh, variables. First of all, environment variables used by Terraform actually to connect the Azure. It's a, a Azure ser a service principal account and also few other things like a uh, uh, build number of uh, the uh, CI job uh, we are uh, we are make 
we are setting mark on the uh, artifacts created by CI job. So uh, based on the uh, build number of CI job, we are deciding which uh, artifact we should uh, retrieve from artifactory and use in uh, bootstrap process. In the case of uh, this prototype, I just use uh, a standard uh, Engine's package, uh, but still, this uh, thing is uh, <coughs> used in, uh, in in my Jenkins pipeline. And also, uh, I'm adding uh, the uh, job ID uh, number into the uh, name of VMs in, in the Azure console. We are able to see. Uh -huh. Okay, set of uh, virtual machines. It's uh, uh, regarding the uh, green inside the names. Still, it's project requirement. This uh, naming uh, policy uh, was used before I started. The, my implementing my changes in uh, this project and it's left over. So <laughs> even uh, the VMs inside the blue group or VMs inside the temporary group, still they have uh, this uh, green word inside the names. And actually, in this case, uh, we have the project name, uh, environment name, uh, <coughs> word green, it uses it in any uh, of groups, uh, name of the resource virtual machine, and three numbers. Uh, last one, it's a uh, uh, index of VMs. Uh, we are able to create more than uh, two VMs uh, for uh, uh, do some manual uh, scaling for the project. Uh, next one, seeing uh, six, it's a, a build number of uh, the uh, deployment uh, deployment pipeline itself. And next one, number four, it's a, a build number of CI job, which is uh, which I'm not able to show for you, but I left this stuff here. And uh, to run uh, in case of uh, project uh, after the uh, successful uh, CI process completion, uh, uh, this uh, deployment pipeline will be triggered uh, automatically, but in our case, I just uh, trigger it manually. So I'm providing the, uh, seven. Uh, the build ID, which is four, I'm providing the number of virtual machines and start the build. Uh, this may take a bit of time, something like uh, 20 or 30 minutes because of, uh, of because of Azure API and also Bootstrap step. Uh, but even uh, this 20 or 30 minutes is better than one hour or more for uh, the old deployment. So in this case, uh, temporary group VMs uh, we are already created and therefore I'm just uh, going to the Ansible uh, bootstrapping step. Uh, and actually, uh, during the execution of uh, this stuff, we can switch back to this very sharp presentation and go to the last one slide here. So if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions, because uh, as I said, it's a uh, this solution which uses uh, Terraform and uh, state move and targets. Uh, uh, for me, it looks like a bit recycled, but uh, I haven't found uh, any other way to create this uh, 
uh, stuff uh, as a solution and I try to do this in this way. And also you may notice that I haven't uh, used it uh, ability of uh, Terraform provisioners to start the action based on the resource state. Uh, I checked this, this possibility, but it's, mm, I'm not able to imp implement it here because uh, <laughs> actually in case of uh, Blue uh, group, I don't need uh, to start some action on destroy. I need to start uh, some action on the, uh, let's say, available state. And I mean, uh, start action to stop the VMs, to move them in the arcade state. And uh, <laughs> I haven't found other way except just use uh, PowerShell to stop these VMs. Actually, it's possible to use uh, shell with uh, Azure CLI, but as I mentioned, we are using uh, Windows uh, slaves and that's why PowerShell was uh, my solution. So actually, that's all for now. After showing this slide with the uh, questions world, world, I can move back <laughs> to the pipeline itself and you are able to see what we are able to see here. Uh -huh. It's uh, okay. It's switching uh, actually moving the state from therefore uh, from uh, the temporary group into the green group and updates the uh, load balance rules. And this will take a bit of time. So guys, maybe you have some questions, suggestions, anything? I have a question in the chat. Is the same solution we can use if we need to migrate a current infrastructure to other hosting provider. Uh, hmm. In case of uh, this deployment realization, mm, no, it, at least in uh, the current state. Yeah, it's possible to connect uh, another one provider and uh, describe uh, the resources inside this provider uh, with other modules and then create the resources inside the other uh, hosting provider uh, actually and then uh, yes yeah, switch uh, the names of uh, groups inside the Jenkins files and start it and yeah it will uh, create the same scene but in the current state mm, not sure but at least it's possible to use <laughs> Terraform to work, to work with uh, multiple providers. <laughs>